Okay, so good day class. So I'm your instructor for Building Technology 5, which is about advanced construction technology. For our lecture this week, I'm just going to introduce you to some of the uh, technologies that are existing today. So let's start with our lecture. So construction industry is repeatedly criticized for being inefficient and slow to innovate. So the basic methods of construction uh, techniques and technologies have changed little since Roman times. But the application of innovation in the construction industry is not straightforward. Okay, so uh, our technology class, especially here in the Philippines, what it was 20 years ago is basically the same thing which is being adapted, especially when you look at uh, small projects such as residential buildings. Okay. So if you can, uh, if you look and observe a lot of our construction workers, they don't know how to use uh, even power tools, which is uh, quite uh, really having a negative impact on our, uh, on our efficiency, in, and which makes us lagging behind more advanced countries. That is why it is important for us to adapt uh, new technologies and adapt to the new trends so that we can be more efficient and we can build better infrastructure for our nation. Okay. So every construction project is different. Every site is a singular prototype. Construction works are located in different places and involve the constant movement of personnel and machinery. In addition, the weather and other factors can prevent the application of previous experience effectively. So what this statement means class that uh, I think you have learned that in your design in your design subjects and your, your previous building tech subjects that each and every project is unique. It's because when you build a project on a certain location, it does not mean that the factors are the same, will be the same if you build it on a different location. That is because every site is different. That there, there might be a difference in Topography. There might be a difference in how you source the materials, and there might be a difference in the weather conditions also, and also with the soil conditions. Okay. So the term advanced construction technology covers a wide range of modern techniques and practices that encompass the latest developments in materials technology, design procedures, quantity surveying, facilities management, services structural analysis and design and management studies. Incorporating advanced construction technology into practice can increase levels of quality, efficiency, safety, sustainability, and value for money. However, there is often a conflict between traditional industry methods and innovative new practices and it is often blamed for a relatively slow rate of transfer within the industry. So, can you think, class, why there's a conflict between traditional industry methods and innovative new practices? For me, I think the reason there's a conflict is that those who are already in the work, uh, those who are used to traditional industry methods have a hard time adjusting using uh, different methods. Okay? So, I think this is the primary the primary. History. The primary reason why there is a slow rate of technology transfer in our industry. The adoption of advanced construction technology requires an appropriate design, commitment from the project team, suitable procurement strategies, good quality control, appropriate training, and careful commissioning. So this means that when you design something class, you have to uh, take into account what appropriate construction technology that you're going to use. Okay, so you already have an idea in your mind okay, when you design. Then, it, of course, it requires the commitment from the whole project team. So if they're not committed in using that particular technology, then you're going to have a lot of resistance, which will hamper your progress. Then you need to have suitable procurement strategies because some materials <coughs> excuse me, might be available on a certain site but not available on another. 
then you have to have good quality control, appropriate training, and careful commissioning. So advanced construction technologies are commonly described as, amongst many others, advanced forms of 3D printing, materials, building information modeling, cladding systems, computer-aided design, and computer-aided manufacturing, computer numerical control, construction innovation hub, construction plan, modern methods of construction, modular construction, off-site manufacturing, prefabrication and pre-assembly, research and development, site investigations and surveying, substructure works, water engineering, temporary works, smart technology, robotics, and GPS controlled equipment. Okay. So this is an example of 3D printing. So 3D printing which is referred to as additive manufacturing is a computer controlled sequential layering of materials to create three-dimensional shapes. So it is particularly useful for prototyping and for the manufacture of geometrically complex components. Okay, so when you use 3D printers last, I think uh, it increases your creativity also and the, level, the kind of structure that uh, you're going to produce because as you, if you're going to use human workers, human workers have limitations with their skills. But if you're going to use 3D printers, since it is guided by uh, technology and robotics, it will be easier to do more complex shapes, which in turn uh, could give you more creative freedom. And you can create shapes that are impossible to be built with the human hands. Okay, then in the construction industry, 3D printing can be used to create construction components. So you're going to use, uh, you're going to print different components or to print entire buildings. So I've heard that in China that they're able to print entire buildings. Uh, this is something that I hope will be adopted in our country as well. Then construction is well suited to 3D printing as much of the information necessary to create an item will exist as a result of the design process. And the industry is already experienced in Computer aided manufacturing. And the emer recent emergence of building information modeling, in particular, may facilitate greater use of 3D printing. So I think since you're already in your third year, you're already well versed with different uh, computer aided pro uh, design, uh, design uh, drawing, uh, drafting uh, technologies such as Lumion, AutoCAD, 3D Max. Okay. So when you say about BIM, you're going to use information to build your building so when you when you design the building you could already generate its project management uh, data you could generate the bill of mat quantities the bill of materials then you're going to have your drawing sheets which is really uh, great okay. i think that is the future also and it would make a uh, more efficient and more accurate uh, planning in the future then you also have this uh, term, which is cladding. I think a lot of you are really familiar with it. So I think this, this example glass is a building in Riyadh. This is a library building. I think I've seen it once, uh, once, twice, or thrice when I, was, when I went to Riyadh a few years back. So the term cladding refers to components that are attached to the primary structure of a building to form non-structural external surfaces. So in this case, glass, that building, uh, uh, attached what you call uh, tensile structures outside which uh, really looks cool because it creates some sort of uh, three-dimensional depth for the building so while cladding is generally attached to the structure of the building it typically does not contribute to stability that it only plays a structural load a role transferring wind loads impact loads no loads and its own way to the structure and framework Then we also have the modern methods of construction. Uh, I think this will be the uh, our main focus for this course, and we'll discuss that in greater detail in the next meetings. So since the world, Second World War, the 
desperate need to deliver new housing quickly. Modern methods of construction, MMC or smart construction, has been promoted as a way of working more effectively to achieve more without using more. So it centers around the use of off-site construction techniques that can benefit from factory conditions and mass production techniques. So basically, class, the, the term means that you're going to manufacture comp components of a building off-site and you're going to assemble them back in the site. Okay? I think this is much faster because you'll have a lead time when you finish your designs. You can already use uh, fact, uh, management fa management techniques uh, just like with what you do in factories to manufacture each component. Then you're going to transfer them all, build them, uh, at the site. Then let's move to robotics. So, advanced technology is changing the construction industry. So, the proliferation of context, so that that's the intersection of tools associated with construction, construction technologies having impact on everything that is digitally connected. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. So I think uh, the primary advantage of robots is that it can reach places which are dangerous to humans. And then it, you can also do more accurate, uh, produce more accurate um, components. Okay? So as technology becomes more advanced, it's expensive, it's simpler to use and more efficient, it's, its adoption is gradually increasing. So this is particularly true in the case of robotics. So robotics relates to works executed by automated machinery. So this form of contact that is typically used for repetitive tasks, dangerous tasks, heavy lifting, and so on. So if you have repetitive tasks in your project, it is much better to use robots. And then it's, if there are tasks that are too dangerous for human beings, so you can send robots instead. Then you can also use them for heavy lifting and so on. So, for example, class is an example of the use of robots in the construction industry. So, it would be more accurate uh, and quite useful, especially if you are the one uh, planning or scheduling the project. Because you'll have an idea of how much that particular equipment or robot or machinery can finish in a day. Okay. Compared to human beings, class. <coughs> which are harder to manage, the use of uh, using robots um, is more predictable. So this is really good for project planners. Okay, so it's an example of robots in the construction industry. As you can see, an example, <coughs> and the robot is welding uh, the steel. Okay. What the advantage is that you have a computer to analyze if you're to, uh, how to analyze the works. Okay. And I think that's it for this week. So just have an introduction. So if any questions, you can email me or you can send a PM or messenger or write a message at our uh, Facebook page. Okay, so I'll be uh, writing your activity for this week. In our Facebook uh, page, be sure to keep uh, updated always and to submit your requirements uh, on time, uh, especially if you have uh, scholarships. Uh, okay, because I don't want you to have low grades, also. But you have to do your part as students, because that's what I have. Uh, what's, that's what I tell in my uh, professional practice class. Okay, so the practice of architecture as a profession is not a human right, but it is a privilege granted by the state. So therefore, class, do your best to become architects uh, that are worthy of the name. Okay, so you have to know uh, this basic knowledge and you have to master them eventually someday. Okay, so see you next meeting and stay safe always.